Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. If you're just joining us, we're talking about the rule of law and the Buhari government's approach to it. My panel tonight, uh, from our Buja studio, Mr. Shekun Shoumi is a spokesperson of the PDP presidential campaign organization, a member of the PDP. Mr. Daniel Buala, a lawyer and also a member, the chieftain of the APC. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming on tonight. Perhaps to refresh the memories and minds of those who are, well, uh, joining, uh, just join us and set the proper premise. The argument between the senior, two senior advocates of Nigeria, the Nigerian Bar Association, Mr. Mike Ozekome and Mr. Femi Falana. Take a listen to it one more time and we, we, we get to talk to our guests from Abuja studio. Since members of the bench are defunct and they cannot protest by themselves, Taking on the kind of role we saw lawyers do on the night of March 2007, when they went to the streets in Pakistan and shut down the entire country because President Pavas Musharraf removed unjustly and unconstitutionally Mohammed Musharraf, the then Chief Justice. Can't we do more than we have done? My learned friend talk about Pakistan. I mean, was that yes. The chief justice then was not removed for corruption. Only, sir, can the NBA morally, morally, go to the street to fight for judges who have millions that they cannot account for in their accounts? So let's get talking, everyone. And from Abuja studio, we get the conversation started. Uh, Mr. Shagun Shawumi, let me get a first shot with you. How would you react, uh, Mr. Shawumi, uh, it's you we're starting with. How would you react or assess the Buhari government and its approach to the rule of law if you wait the four years of this, or the fourth term of this government? They said they are going to consolidate on what they've done in the first four years in the second term. How would you assess the government? Well, thank you very much, Joe, and uh, nice to be here again. You see, I think that the first thing that I would like to say is that the Buhari administration is bedeviled by its history. And I can understand why they will run into some of these landmines. Perhaps the president wished to bring about a new order, and in trying to do that, he believes that things should happen fast and should happen swiftly. As beautiful as the idea of a new order, anti-corruption, straightening out the society may sound, there is a bigger need for him to understand that if the ideas we bring cannot be fitted within the bodies of the laws available in the country in such a manner that anybody who is within that country can reasonably believe and that you are living by the ethos that none is above the law, and the law is psychosant and will be applied universally and uniformly to people, then there won't be much of a problem. What we see, or at least from our own standpoint, is that the law has suddenly become, from the side of the judges, a difficult to pen opinion based on the early days of going in there, doing gestapo with their, with their members, dragging them in a shameless manner before public opinion, eventually throwing them away. That on its own con communicated fear to judges. Then before they could settle on that, you then went on a step further to in the most brazen and manner, without respect to the procedures that are previously done, which I will elucidate much later, you went and then attacked the highest judge in the land, which is the Chief Justice, under all the allegations that you claim you saw money in account and all that, pretending as if you do not know that there are laid down channels by which that should be done. But be that as it may, what we have seen with them is they have used the instrument of office to harass their, their opponents, majorly members of the PDP. They have used the, uh, the instrument of the state to harass civil society. A lot of journalists, quite a lot of them, have had a lot of runnings with the law. Some are even being looked for as we speak. We can't find that the other, no one has told us where the young man is. People say all sorts of things, but government is not speaking up as to the whereabouts, and there are quite a few others. The, in the first time, again, they found it extremely difficult to obey simple orders that has emanated from court. Among the list, without necessarily listing all, 
there's the Dasuki matter. A court in this land cannot grant him bail for a billable offense and you won't bail, allow him bail. There is the now almost uh, difficult to place issue with the, um, the guy in uh, Zaria, the Azazaki matter. Quite a lot of courts also gave him bills. It was difficult for them to believe. There was also a few issues in the course of that first four years where we saw that the government was more interested in bearing his fangs and showing that his fangs would hit people. And then they had an interpretation of what was exactly the position of law to reflect the desires that they have. Unfortunately, the law is not expected to run that way. The law is expected to be run knowing fully well that every chief executive, be you a president or a sovereign or whatever, who derives the legitimacy of his seat from the body of the laws of that country must necessarily respect the law. For when you do not respect the law, invariably, you are then saying that you are like a rogue because you and your office are the creation of the law. So as far as I am concerned, I think it's a work in progress. We have closed the chapter of the first time. We're still very much trying to open the second term chapter when we are done with the tribunal. But suffice to say, almost all rating agencies, Transparency International, um, uh, uh, the one that does Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, all of them come to the table with reports saying that there is something not adding up to the way the Nigerian government is acting relative to the respect of the rule of law. And I tell you this, the integrity and the courage that the judiciary in Nigeria have earned over the years have suddenly become barraged because of the attitude, the tendencies, the fear that has been introduced into the system by them. It is now back to the judiciary to recognize that if they are not able to assert their own independence, then we better just put it, call it a day and say that we're no longer running a democracy. Because the relationship between the rule of law, democracy, and good governance are like seismic twins. You really cannot separate them. It takes a constant struggle for nations to understand that even if you look within the Islamic jurisprudence, you'll find out that from as far back as the 7th century, they have come to the conclusion that no caliphate will be allowed to operate even above whatever it is that they consider to be the Sharia law, which is the law there. So invariably, society has evolved to a point where the rule of law, the interpretation of same by the court, and the legislation of same by the, the judiciary, by the legislature, the totality of it is what we can then say, yes, this Mr. Shawumi, so invariably, well, this Mr. Shawumi, well. therefore, for the Buhari regime, I scored them very low. Okay, so you, you say you're scoring them very low. Uh, in summary, would you say that the Buhari government respects the rule of law? Is that question directed at me? No, no, Mr. Shawumi, I just wanted him to summarize. He said, he ended okay. by saying that he scored, Mr. Shawumi said he scored the Buhari government low in the approach to the rule of law. But I wanted him to summarize before I quickly come to you. What you're saying, Mr. Shawumi, invariably is uh, the approach of the Buhari government to the rule of law, is it that they respect the rule of law or not? Simply put, they do not respect the rule of law. They have converted their own opinions and views and emotions to be the totality of the law in the country, which needn't be so. Mr. Mr. Buala, uh, weigh in and uh, let, let's get your reaction to what Mr. Shoumi has said. Is it true that the Buhari government has largely not respected the rule of law? Well, uh, we do not need lecture from PDP on the concept of the rule of law because this administration has done far better than they did in their time. But let me just preface, preface that with these words. The concept of the rule of law means that nobody is above the law and there is equality before the law, meaning everybody is equal before the law. Before this administration came on board, the norm was that in election, for example, there was no need for credibility. As many talks as you can gather and get them to scatter an event where election is taking place will be your comparative advantage. If you fail to do so, INEC will be ordered to announce you as the winner and the common cliche will meet in court. Used to be the norm. But under this administration, the rule of law has been established that if you allow talks to go and disrupt election, 
you are doing so at the risk of your life. Section 45 of the Constitution is clear. Nothing shall invalidate the provisions of extant law. Talk about section 37, 38, 39, 40, and 49, which establish guaranteed rights of citizens. It says nothing will invalidate any law that is reasonably justified in a democratic society. In other words, all of these rights you have mentioned are not absolute because there may be an occasion or there may be a need for a law to be made or order to be issued for the purposes of public order, for the purposes of public health, for the purposes of defense and safety of the public. So take, for example, a law for advanced fee fraud, for proceed of crime, that now has guaranteed in tariff for features. Somebody would have said, well, that I have a right to personal property, but nothing shall invalidate any law that is reasonably made for the purposes of all of that. Now, why do, do we need a lecture from PDP who, in their time, a president stood right before the country and ordered the army to shoot at sight every OPC member? Do we need a lecture from the party that, in their time, the governor of the central bank who attempted to expose corruption was not only sacked, but was almost prosecuted? Why do we need lecture from a party that during their time, their national security advisor warned that the party was condoning and promoting Boko Haram? The next thing they did was that they sacked him. Do we need a lecture from a party that made it clear, they, they actually decreed that stealing is not corruption? In their time, you could steal and go away. But in this democratic setting, there is equality before the law. If you steal, you will face the wrath of the law. Now, coming to court order, coming to the obedience to court order, our memories have not, you know, been forgotten, so to speak, sorry. Is it not the same PDP that during their time, Justice Salami, who at the recommendation of NJC that he should be reinstated, this same government of theirs sacked him with impunity? How many orders of court during their times were made that they didn't obey? Are you suggesting that the 16 billion which could not be accounted for amount for the expression of right, expression of opinion, expression of personal property? The rule of law does not promote misbehavior. The rule of law does not promote stealing. The rule of law means that everybody before the law is equal. If you steal, you will face the wrath of the law. And they talk about El Zagzaki. The court made an order that he should be taken to India for medical treatment. What happened? When he went to the India they like referencing, he was heard to have said, I better come back to Nigeria because in the protective custody in Nigeria, I have all the treatment that I need. What are we saying? So, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Buala, because he made reference to some other court cases that some other court orders that he said, he made, uh, allegedly said, were not obeyed. Uh, uh, court orders on uh, uh, Mr. Dasuki, Court orders on the uh, initial court orders allowing Ezazaki to go uh, to go on bail. Uh, those are some of the court orders that you raised. Uh, would you respond to that? Let me speak for the records. The order of court is valid and subsisting until it is overturned or set as it is either set aside or overturned by an appellate court. And so if the court makes an order, it doesn't matter whether it is this government or past government, APC or PDP, that order must be obeyed. As a legal practitioner, my professional duty is to promote the rule of law, foster the course of justice, and ensure that we do not act in such a manner that our professional conduct will be judged you know, wrongly. So if there was an order against the government, the government ought to obey the order. If there is an appeal against that order to the court, until the appeal is determined, the order is to be obeyed. So it doesn't matter whether it is my government or under government. But if you are giving a comparative analysis of the government, I don't think PDP, in fact, if you ask for my opinion, I can tell you that humorously, we ought to by now have had the court to proscribe PDP as a terrorist organization. Wow. Uh, that could be very strong. Let me allow Mr. Shoumi to respond to that. Mr. Shoumi, and, and uh, uh, there were some critics who say uh, when they hear the PDP, for example, speak, they are perhaps not happy with the temperature that is unfavorable to them, perhaps to what they say is anti-corruption and anti-bad governance. How would you react to that? Okay. 
Well, show, show, before I go to that, let me try and engage my friend a bit. You see, there's something called the law and the logic of experience. What the Leonard men at that time were trying to ask is, what exactly constitutes or should be defined as obeying the rule of law? And I took time to pick out five strong ones so that we can leave this, oh, 16 years ago, PDP was sleeping on the streets. 16 years today, we are going to be sleeping on the street. 10 years ago, that's not what we're discussing. No one in his right senses will say that when there is a change of government, after four years, the only excuse they have for every misdemeanor is that that misdemeanor happened in the past. I'll tell him the five principles. I'll try and remind him. The first is that the management and the separate players within any jurisprudence, any area, must be responsibly beneath the warrant. That means whatever the law says, they must obey. Are they doing that? Are if you, you think, the, the if you think they court? are, I can remind you of the time when <laughs> Echo has said, leave, leave Dazuki. After all courts in Nigeria said so, you didn't believe. Nigerian Bar Association, a couple of years ago, last year, not this year, did call out the president that this concept of saying uh, we are going to have a situation where overriding security issues is going to be your reason for saying all matters in the country and all laws in the country are not to be obeyed is dangerous. And that is the antidote that will lead us into a civilian dictatorship, which we have now suddenly come full-fledged under. Again, there is also the principle that the law must be fair, it must be consistent, and it must be reasonably implemented, implementable. Appeal needs to be worked up to date. And when there is an appeal, if the appeal is not tantamount to a stay of execution of the law, the appeal must be obeyed. Look. Is that a judgment uh, of a No, court? no, no. I, if you want me to cite judgments of court for you, I came with quite a few. Let me try and take you to the issues around the unnogging matter. On the unnogging matter, no one in PDP has told you. I hope you, it's not a lawyer that wrote this. No, 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 no. Do you know? You don't even have an idea of what I am and who I am and how many things I've studied on. Just okay. because I'm not practicing law doesn't make me not to be a lawyer. Maybe I would better talk about that the next time. But what I wanted to tell you is this. There is a laid down procedure to which you do things. The procedure is simple. Petition NJC. Refer to CCB. Refer to CCT. Address the Senate. Suspend and remove it. The extant law are clear. Section 231, subsection 1 and 2, 1999 Constitution. Section 292, subsection 1, 1999 Constitution. Paragraph 20 and 21 of the third schedule. All of this reasonably explained. And I want to plead with my colleague. Yeah. You see, if you harass opposition, maybe people can leave it to politics. If you harass the judges, invariably what you are saying is that no one in the country can correct you can admonish you, or can interpret the rights of others. Then you make it even worse when you now go after civil society and people that have nothing but their voices. The Buhari government has become the law, the interpretation of the law, the execution of the law, the determination of the law, and the law unto itself. And that's where we have an issue. If someone makes a mistake of using an adjective that is strong, within 45 minutes, you're going to run to his house and you're going to escalate that adjective to mean that the totality of that adjective is, is treason. Whereas the law expects that treason and such tough terms must be adjudicated in court. Look, we can do PDP did this, PDP did that, all we like. The point is that the first four years was given to APC so that they can improve on things. They failed on that. They've gotten another... All right. So far, so good. We don't know yet because we have very, very big issues, and we are hoping that the judiciary will have the courage and the bravery to rule according to law and the facts that are Keep presented before them the court. in this court. We are hoping so. Keep All right, Mr. Sarumi, so apologies. Let me, let me pause you for a moment let me, because we need to take a break. Uh, I'll come back to Mr. Buala. Uh, although you've not answered my question, Mr. Uh, Sarumi, but we'll come back after the break, and perhaps when we come back up next, We'll continue our conversation on the rule of law and the approach of the President Buhari government. Also, we'll try to take a look at the 2019 elections, the reviews from the civil society organization, and the future of our elections. Join us again, everyone.
Thank you so much, everyone, uh, for staying with us on the program. And welcome back. Before we get back to the conversation, did you see that? Uh, and did you see that today? Uh, it's a story of uh, one of uh, the Ohio State Governor's Commissioner, the 27-year-old commissioner in charge of the youth uh, ministry, that the young man there gets uh, a nod from his boss. Did you see that? Perhaps one of the youngest, and also the speaker there, is one of the youngest speakers in of the House of Assembly in Nigeria. Let's get back to the conversation, everyone, shall we? Let me come back to you quickly, uh, Mr. I, I want us to round up the conversation around the issues of the rule of law and quickly move to the uh, reviews on the 2019 elections. And I wanted to give your, uh, your final thoughts on these issues of the rule of law. But Mr. Shoumi, let me give you 45 seconds to respond to my question uh, about what critics have said that perhaps the reason why PDP is talking now is because the climate is not fair to them because of alleged corruption in your government when PDP was in power and bad governance. That is the reason uh, they say that you are now uh, speaking up. Well, I wish the country would say that APC is a government of saints. But far from being a government of saints, what we find is that APC is the proverbial kettle that is extremely not so black, calling the pot black. The fact of the matter is that there's nothing around the APC government that reflects that transparency is going on. There's nothing around their government that suggests that they're fighting corruption. If you want me to name personalities among them, you can just look at the list of their new ministers. Those of them that have a very terrible charge sheet before EFCC. If you are tired of looking at that, you can go look for their former SGF and ask us how far they've gone with the case. If you are tired of that, you can go and ask them who has all the houses and all the money that was found in the Koyi and all the numerous bust money. If you are tired of that, you can go to their MBAs. If you are tired of that, you can ask them about how they got money they were spending on Air Nigeria without appropriation, contrary to section um, Director H1 of the Nigerian 1999 Constitution. Look, I do not like a brick bat of he said, they said. I prefer that we talk to the issues in a manner that the man that has the responsibility today, which is APC and Buhari, can then smell the copy and improve. Clearly, no one is going to tell you that some of the rushes coming out and the words coming out that around corruption around the PDP government should not be investigated. Investigated. But when Mr. you are Mr. investigating, Mr. Shomi, do not would, constitute Mr. your Shomi, investigation to you mean say, a, a, are, are you saying the PDP government is better than the government of the APC? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I am saying that the PDP government, in terms of its attitude to the rule of law, and even the instruments with which the country is fighting corruption today, the Administration of Criminal Justice PDP, EFCC PDP, ICPC PDP, everything that works... All as right. institutional let's, let's system allow, to fight corruption was PDP. To, to what has APC been able to bring to the please, table, please, apart uh, from excessive parochialism and the brought issues here. Mr. Shoumi has raised here? Let me, let me just uh, say something. You see, no, I cannot sit here and tell you because I belong to APC, therefore everybody is a, in APC is a saint and there is no corruption in APC or Thank there is you. no corruption of pe people in the government. No, we are not. You, you don't build a nation by living in that kind of uh, a mentality. But what we are saying is that if lecture is to come, let it come from Young Progressive Party and some of these other parties that have idea, not from these people that have spent their integrity in the past 16 years. Because, look, imagine in their time, national chairman of the party expressed opinion contrary to the president. The president went to his house in the night with his resignation letter at gunpoint and asked him to sign. Are these people the ones to come and teach us under packaging and repackaging them? I, I saw them in the build-up to the election with all kinds of names, giving step three to good governance, step four. And some of them have relationship with some of these NGO that when they come on board and you see the NGO talking, you would think as if this NGO are expressing an opinion different from that of PDP members. Okay. PDP should not be talking about good governance in Nigeria. We welcome ideas from other parties and people with incredible ideas. They confuse the young people in the build-up to the election. When their former president came, uh, the former president, their, their father woke, woke up and now said he is looking for third, uh, third, third party, the third force. And then the young people gathered around him and then he carried all of them and submitted them to the old school. We don't need PDP at all. 
Mr. Well, Buala, uh, Mr. Shoumi uh, mentioned something. I'd like you to quickly react to it before we can uh, just touch quickly on the 2019 election reviews. Uh, he did say right. that uh, perhaps these are his words that your party is a bad uh, example of uh, uh, a, a representation of the good things that we should be expecting in government because he made mention of some of the characters in your party and he picked holes in some of their character, especially as it's presently constituted. In every human society, there are good and there are bad. In church, there are bad people. In monks, there are bad people, there are good people. I am sure in Shaumi's house, there will be good people and there will be good, bad people. It doesn't mean they are not members of his family. And it doesn't mean because he loves them, therefore he's condemning uh, 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 other uh, you know, people or other family. Let me say in, 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 in a nutshell and rounding up, like I said, and it bears repeating, there are corrupt people. But if you look at it comparatively, especially looking at where we are coming out from and where we are going, we have improved in this government by bringing strong will to what we say about fighting corruption. Imagine a party, the only thing they'd hate to hear is fight against corruption. Every other thing you talk, they are interested in hearing it. Fight against corruption, they are, how can you say that they have idea? How can you say their postulation is correct? How can you say their assertion is correct? They do, what we're saying is if you come to equity, come with clean hands. They don't have the moral right to talk about good governance, to talk about the rule of law. That's all I'm saying. We have two minutes yeah. to, to close the show. But the two minutes, I like <laughs> both of you to share it on the program. And one minute uh, for each to talk on uh, the review on the 2019 election at CC CDD and Yagata. They mentioned the issues of collation, having a lot of issues. They mentioned the issues of violence and thuggery. They picked all in the activities of security agencies. And they did say that there are logistics problems with INEC. Mr. Shoumi, can you shoot first? Well, I will. Thank you very much. First of all, I'll say that Nas National Democratic Institute is not a Nigerian, it's not a PDP NGO. International Republican Institute is not a PDP NGO. What's their verdict? 2019 election failed to meet even the standard of 2015. Um, the president of that same institute said, citizens' confidence have been significantly damaged and shaken in 2019. Yiga has the same, you've said that. Center for Democracy and Development says, on his report in 29th of August 2019, post mortem, he described 2019 elections as chaotic, shambolic. European Union says systemic failings. National Council for Situ Society Situation Room also said they have operated outside the law. The media and everybody has been harassed. And the People's Democratic Party of Nigeria, the presidential candidate, whom I am a spokesman, Atikwa Wakar, we also say that election cannot stand if it is adjudicated by a fair-minded, a non-biased, and a reasonable set of judges, because we know the facts, they know the facts, the Nigerians right. know the facts, we won that election, we won it by all, in, in all the material particulars, we won it fair, we but won we, it we square, to, you, we you, won you, it... You, you one minute is over, Mr. Shomi. Let's give Mr. Bawala one, one minute now. Mr. Oh, Bawala, sad. your reaction to it, the review of the elections. One minute, please. Well, uh, I know that the European Union said that 2019 election is a far improved election from the previous one. And I know that Washington Post said that the election of 2019 was a referendum on honesty and transparency against corruption. I know that the American government lauded the election of 2019 amidst all. It is the local, uh, local oh. NGOs that are, that are operating as decoy or PDP that come out to say some things that are favorable to the assertion of PDP. But to be honest with you, in my last words, I will keep praying for them because post-election traumatic disorder is not a uh, small sickness. Well, uh, <laughs> I don't know how to close the show, but we must close the show because we're out of time. Many thanks, gentlemen, for coming out. Mr. Shegun Shoumi, uh, spokesperson of the PDP Presidential Campaign Organization, and Mr. Daniel Buala, a lawyer and a member of the APC. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming on. Well, that's our show for tonight, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Shawakimale. Bye-bye.